What's going on, guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Seattle Vikings. We're picking up where we left off here. Uh, just getting that first bit of the season done. We're 15, 8, and 0, 6, and 4 in the last 10. And Walter Boyle is killing it. First line's killing it in general. And uh, we'll just uh, refresh. We've made some uh, line changes. We're going to try Nash onto the second line. Couture down with Fast since he's got good chemistry together. If this doesn't work out, I can try another thing. Moving Couture up as well as Fast. Even though Nyquist is doing pretty good, he still is listed as third liner. So we can get away with playing him on that third line if we wanted to. You know, and have him in his role and, you know, maybe try fast up into a higher role along with Couture and Henrik. I don't know. But we're trying trying to get a few different things working. Now, our power play is a bit low. Um, but we're I think we're going to keep the lines how they are for now. I do like I do like that. Um, and we did make some uh, changes to the penalty kill as well. Now, I, I saw a couple of people asking, uh, why isn't Carlson on the penalty kill? Well, he was on the penalty kill for the entire first part of the season. He was on the second pairing here. And our penalty kill is sub-70%. So obviously we needed kind of a big overhaul there, at least in some regards. So we're going to try these changes. If these changes don't work, we could try other things. But I don't know. Penalty kill is a struggle for us for some reason. So we'll see what happens. I'm not too sure. I mean, maybe it is because we actually don't have any defensive defensemen right now. All of our guys are offensive or two-way. Carlson's offensive. Everyone else is two-way. But we do have some of those guys, defensive defensemen, in the system who we are training up. So, perhaps uh, our penalty kill will get better internally like that. And uh, I do need to show the goddamn awards from last year because that's three. <laughs> I even mentioned it last video. Oh, I should show the awards. Then I didn't do it. So, let me do that before I forget because I will forget. I've forgotten like three times now. So, let's get that out of the way. So, the Dallas Stars won the Stanley Cup. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. It's the weird thing. Uh, Winnipeg, that's twice in a row they've won the President's. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets made it to the Stanley Cup, but lost. Rip. All right, so player awards. Tavares got the Art Ross. Haglin got that uh, um, Hart Memorial. Wow. After didn't he win the? I think he won the Conn Smythe the year before too. Carlson got the Norris. Uh, Patty Kane with the Lady Bing. Uh, Henrik got the Calder. Nice. All right. So yeah, Henrik did. Um, okay, it was two years ago that Haglin won the Conn. All right, sorry the. What did I say? Con Smythe the first time? Yeah. Calder. I meant it. Um, Con Smythe went to Sagan. Uh, Bobrovsky went to Vesna. Uh, <laughs> the Vesna went to Bobrovsky. Uh, William M. Jennings went to Bobrovsky as well. Uh, Dylan on LA got the Masterson. I don't like that. Seeing Dylan on LA, that's horrid. Uh, the Selkie went to Toscala. And uh, Ten Lindsay also went to Haglin. And Maurice Richard to Bars. Okay. So there we go. We uh, saw the awards here, and now we will continue, and I'm going to go pretty slow here just to see if these lines are going to work out, especially that second line combination. I don't know. We'll have to see if Nash can once again play well in a scoring role. He has in the past, but he's, you know, he's getting older now. He's still our captain, but he's not at that 82, 83 he was at. A lot of that was stat growth, so we'll see. Um, yeah, we're fine. What just happened up there? Something about locker room chemistry in my AHL. Not too sure what that was. All right, we did answer back with a win, so we're right back to a 2-1 to win-loss ratio. That's good. Karpovtsev accepted his extension. Nice. All right, so we got Karpovtsev to that six-year extension for like 6.6-something .6 mil, I think. Another win right there. That's good. It looks like we are... Uh-oh. Kai McCullough, that's our goalie. All right, let me take a look at this, because I, I want to choose who I put in for that on the, on the goalie side of things. Well, obviously, we're going to move up Ward here. 72 overall. And we do have a couple, which one? I think Sandstrom, yeah, Sandstrom was the better of the two. He'll be back up for a bit. Sandstrom will hop in there. Yeah, that'll work. All right, it does seem like we're still doing good and maybe even doing better now with these with Nash on the second line. It's only been two games, so it's hard to say. We have to obviously give it a bit more time to settle. All right, so hopefully, oh, that's another goalie. I don't care. <laughs> Too many goddamn elite goalies. Too much value. All right, so we're getting a couple guys who may yet be a low elites here. Two left wingers. Uh, one probably going to be a role player, two-way forward guy. This guy we're not too sure about, but they both have a really good chance to be a low elite, so that's good. Scout's busy going to work. Uh, Cameron Lowe's been injured with an injured wrist. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, he'll put on, he'll put on our best defenseman in there. 
That'll probably be Merkley, which I'm not. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, another win right there. All right, we're stringing them together. We scored a lot in the past. Okay, then we lose right there, but that's okay. Six goals, five goals, seven goals. That's a lot of goal scoring. That's a lot of goal scoring. We got to win against Anaheim right here. Damn it. All right, we get a point, but they get the two. Even though they're not really in the playoff race, you want to get those points off your divisional opponents. Multiple players in Burnaby are now eligible to be dressed. Okay. Uh, Kai McCole is for sure back. That's a full recovery. So, put him in there. He's now up to a 78. That's looking good. Yeah, see, back to the list as minor starter. See that bull crap? I knew it. All right, and I think that it is... Mer no, they put in... Oh, they have Bortuzzo's down here. Yeah, so put in Bortuzzo. Um, I think he still might be sort of injured. Low? I can't see from here, but if I put him back in there... Uh, doesn't look like it, actually. He doesn't have the little symbol next to him. Okay, so he's fine. He's back in. And I was I was considering splitting up Subban and Carlson, but, you know, I was only going to do that if we continued to kind of be meh or think we could use a change. Again, if, if we, you know, lose a few more games here, then I'll definitely consider that. But if we could turn this around with another win, and we seem to be really, really doing well, then I... That's a tough one. Jake Muzzin's been injured. So a few injuries here, but it's not too bad. So Muzzin's on the power play. Clayson can't really be on that power play. I'll sub him in all lines, but I'll switch him. I'll switch him off that power play, obviously. We'll put in Eckholm. Yeah, I'll try Eckholm, because Miller just wasn't getting the job done there. So let's try Eckholm, I guess, for a bit. We can go with two forwards. I was thinking about putting fast on there, but I'll, I'll hold off on doing that. Uh, Clayson could do the penalty kill. That's fine. There we go. Nice shutout victory right there. 21-10-1. So, still with the 2-1 to win-loss ratio, despite the, well, now even if you add in the overtime loss, we have that. So, we're still doing incredible. And we're scoring goals, man. We are really scoring goals here. There's another nice win. Allowed some, but we still outscored our opponents. I, our goals four has got to be out of this world. Jake Muzzin's now fully healed. Perfect. Put him right back in there. For Clayson. I like, I, I still might trade Muzzin, but I'm kind of like... I almost don't want to now. Let's see. He's now only got 14 points. Yeah, I don't know. Is it, is it just our first line carrying like this hard or what? What's he got? 24 points in 34 games played. That's much better. Let's see. This is 14 and 34. This guy's at 26. Yeah. How, how am I even going to move this guy off now? Oh, wow. <laughs> He's almost got as many as... Jesus. Yeah, I think our first line is just going absolute ape shit. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't care. It's going to be tough in the playoffs, but at least we have a lot of depth in that regard. Wow. 7 goals, 17 points. Not bad. 10 points for you. Minus 5. So our fourth line is still kind of struggling. Although, Brzezgalov isn't even since he's been here. So that's not too bad. Brzezgalov's an even. It seems like our line is better with him on there. It's only been 11 games, sure, but he's an even on a line that has, you know, historically, statistically struggled for us in this year. Historically, statistically. I, that makes sense, right? Words words are hard. Oh, man, another shutout win. Five to nothing and another win right there. We are just killing it. 25-10-1. So it seems like overall the line changes have helped. Nash being on the second line, Kachur being on the third, you know, give us some more depth. Kachur shouldn't be mad about his ice time. He's got that PK time. He's still on the power play, too. He's still on that power play. Walter Boyle, man, 47 points in 36 games played. Wow, all right, let's see what's going on here. Let's see, goals for per game. It's almost up to four. 3.78 goals for per game. Goals against 2.36. This is incredible. Power play has gone up to 25.7%. Penalty kill has gone up to 75%. Now, that's a big jump. It was sub-70 last time. Up to 75% is a very good increase. And look, we're not taking that many penalties. We're tied for the second least. Or, sorry, no. Tied for the third least in our division. That's not bad. That really isn't. Compared to like, with some of the other teams above. Ooh, San Jose is having a rough going. Rip. So is LA, though. Right down at the bottom. Okay. Walter Boyle. Wow. Above point a game by far. Heischer. Above point a game. Karpovtsev. Above point a game. This is insane. Henrik, 27 points. Carlson with 26. Krebs, Krebs with 26 on the third line with power play time. Yeah, third line is definitely... So, I guess now we have just kind of three scoring lines. Yeah, Kachur's productions even seem to kind of go at a higher rate. So... 
maybe maybe it's you know it's it doesn't seem like Nash is doing great on the second line but you could argue that he's allowing our other guys to get the job done you could definitely successfully argue that I think because Henrik Nyquist they still have our decent production they're both on pace for 50 points which is perfect Krebs is on pace for 50 points on the third line man I mean even Couture is almost on pace for 50 points now yeah this is this is good stuff this is actually exactly what we wanted to see fast has even got 17 points now you know him and Couture working together it should boost them both up still got some minuses down here but let's just stick with forwards for now so it doesn't get cluttered Still got the minuses, but overall, Brzgalov still an even. Still an even. So, he's holding true there. Jang and Kruger's plus minus haven't moved. Brzgalov is holding him true there. I think Brzgalov was a, was a nice uh, addition here. Now, Shore is also a center. We could try him in the middle and scratch Kruger for a bit. Kruger does have much better face-offs and honestly better defensive stats overall. So, well, they're close defense. 85, 86, and 86 as opposed to... 84, 84, 87. It's it's close. It's kind of identical. I mean, we could try that out, but I do like that Kruger gets only 13 more games played and has 8 more points. I don't know. It's hard to... How's his offense? 82, 81. Sure is a little better offensively. He might help him improve their plus minus. I don't know. We could try it. We could try Shore in there instead of Kruger for a bit. Hard to say. I don't really want to fix what's not broken right now. Our team overall is playing well. I'm not going to get myself a little bit bent out of shape about the fourth line. Because, you know, they're bound to have some minuses on your team. Make it the fourth line instead of the first. <laughs> you want your first line to be dominant. So we'll check out the defenseman. Yeah, Carlson and Subban both getting quite a few points. So you could argue one, you know, taken away a bit from each other. But they're really good. They're both high plus players. Uh, Muzzin's doing incredible. Him and Eckholm on that top six. <laughs> Go on. Way above their, um, well, they're in a roll below their pay grade, I would say, and they're just killing it. Uh, Miller and Pete, nothing wrong with them. I think they're doing well together, considering Pete is just a second-year NHLer. And they're uh, holding true. Neither of them take a lot of penalties. They don't have many people taking a lot of penalties at all, especially on our back end, and that's a good thing. You don't want to see that. All right, so gold senders. Warner still hasn't lost a game. Trust the process. <laughs> Even though his stats keep faltering, he still has yet to lose a game. Our guys love him. Grubauer here has now got three shutouts. His personal stats have even improved more. Looking good. And I love looking at all. And now we got Brizgolov in there. So now we got five rookies on the roster who will likely all get enough games played and not be considered rookies anymore. <laughs> So we'll see. Can Krebs or Nyquist make a run for that Calder? Can we have two years? Maybe not. I mean, they're up pretty low, but you never know. Unless there's a standout guy, they have a good chance. They have a really good chance. All right. I think it's. I think we're good right now. I don't want to change anything. I think our team's working. Our chemistry went up by 1%. We'll check out the progress reports here. See if we got any more growth that I can tell. I think that's all the same. I think Henrik's growth is... Yeah, it's looking exactly what it was. So, alright. In the system now, Kempinen's a 71. I think he was that before. Um, but we do have extra guys in here now. Oh my god, Hamus. This guy's a fucking enforcer. He's 75 overall now. <laughs> what? Ezra. Holy crap, man. <laughs> he's back there still playing in Europe. Oh my goodness! Look what he's doing. Or is he playing in Europe? Maybe he's in the juniors. I thought he came from Europe, though. Oh, man. What the hell? Why is this enforcer growing so... <laughs> Elite enforcer. Man, okay. Well, there's LeBlanc. is up to a 58, 59, 64 for this Watt guy. Let me check out my defensemen. How are they growing? Kimpinen's a lefty. Wisniewski's a righty. Only 62. We need more righties. Benoit, need him to start jumping up. Baradziuk, at least. We know he's in the AHL. Hopefully he grows a bit more. He's not quite on... He's about to be on pace, though, for this year. I think he started at 19 this year. I could be wrong. Maybe he did start at 20, so maybe he's a little bit behind pace, but he's got that medium elite potential. So that should catch him up. Uh, Vorbyov is uh, not grown yet. He's now listed as top six, though. Rip. 
And he's, uh... Yeah, maybe we will have to ship someone out if we want to keep the growth going. Hmm. Vorbiov's ready. He's ready for the top six. It's yet another lefty, though. But we've been playing two lefties down there. Damn. Ah, that's tough. All right, goalies. Okay. Lynch has grown a bit. These guys have grown a bit. I'm just all, I'm also thinking in my head, what am I going to do with that defensive situation? Hmm, it would make sense to make a trade. Ship out Muzzin in. But god damn, they've been doing so good together. Like, I don't want to break them up. I do need to keep my guys growing, but at the same time. They're both listed as top six now. All of them are listed as top six now. Oh, we'd have to pick and choose, so. Lowe's 23. I might actually just trade this guy, honestly. Like, he's decent and all, but. 23 at 78 only for a medium elite offensive defenseman. I don't think he's going anywhere. Vorbiov and DPH, on the other hand, definitely can. Defensive defenseman, 84, 92, 87. That's not incredible, but it's decent. Vorbiov, 84, 86, and 85. Two-way. Hmm. And this guy's got that red top four. He can kind of chill here. You know what? I'll actually move him up like that. Vorbiov, or DPH is likely only going to be top six. This guy's now top four. Damn. Well, I might have to switch out the righty lefty here just to give this guy this ice time because he's top four. So whatever. Honka can still remain in the top six. What kind of two way guy? Ferrazziak. Oh, both two ways. Okay. Oh, man. You know what? Ah. <sighs> I really don't want to break up what's going on in our NHL. We're doing so good. I do want to get growth still, but I'm going to give him one more month. See if see if he's going to grow. Because, like, our team is just doing so goddamn good right now. And we do already have a lot of young guys on the roster. Like, if I bring in too many, too many more, I, I think i got to have a good mix this year. Now, we might still trade. Mo I don't know. If, I, if I'm... I'm honestly considering even holding on to Muzzin for the playoffs too, just to just to give our our guys who are in here a bunch more experience in the playoffs, give them more poise and stuff like that. It's it's so hard to kind of break up what's going on right now. Like on the one hand, I do need my guys to grow, but on the other hand, we already have five five rookies this year who are in in semi important roles. Like how many more could we do and kind of still keep this going here? And with the way our team's going, like. Even the Burnaby Aces are doing great. Like, ugh, I have a hard time bringing them up, even though they are listed as top six. I do still have a hard time bringing them up just because of how our team's doing. And we're getting a lot out of guys that we've put some you know, work in. We've kept, we have had Muzzin for a while. You know, if I lose them to free agency, whatever, um, it'll, you know, it kind of sucks. But we already, we have so much value that we could, we could look in. If we want a rental, we could trade, we don't even, we can trade Couture plus. You know, some of some of our excess prospects, guys that we don't think are going to make the cut, or just stuff that we don't need. I think we could do that still. Uh, Sim, no, I'm not getting, ever getting rid of Sim. Get out of here. I need him to grow. I need to see what he's going to do. There we go. Yeah, we lose the game. We answer right back with three wins. 31-12-1. Burnaby, 30-12-3 now. We're just, both teams are just killing it. Killing it. All right. So any more medium elites here? Well, one that might be way, way late. It's a goalie, of course it is. God damn it. <laughs> of course. So many fucking good goalies in this. Even more than last year. I thought last year I was pretty awesome for finding a bunch of those mid to late round elite goalies. But this year there's like a dime a dozen almost it feels like. 
might even you could even argue it could be toned down a bit but the thing about this is they don't start with that me that high value uh anymore the elites they they fluctuate and not all the elites pan out obviously look at low he's not panning out and we didn't like misplay that guy really at all he's always kind of been in good roles for him right now obviously he's in a role below but everywhere ever other time he has been so just having an elite prospect is no guarantee that they actually turn out to be elite at all there's a lot a lot that can change so, on the one hand, yeah, maybe it's a lot of elites, but on the other hand, not all of them are going to pan out. So, I think it'll take care of itself. We'll be able to see the deeper we go and stuff like that if it, you know, if it gets too good. If it's like a polar opposite of NHL uh, 17, where it would just be so weak in the later years because there wasn't enough good draftees. Alright, well, not seeing many, many late to mid-rounders steals yet oh man another win we're letting in some goals though recently three five and four but we're able to outscore the opposition which is kind of nuts all right we lose right there that's another four goals against game another loss four goals against game so two in a row right there rip but overall still killing it still winning a majority of the games 33 14 and one my goodness on fire oh go oh, god Boyle. can you can you calm down a little bit <laughs> Walter fucking Boyle. How is Vancouver keeping up with us? Jesus. Must have a good team over there. Walter Boyle. 65 points in 48 games played. He's a 90 overall now. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, th our goals four went up. Our goals against definitely went up. Oh, yeah. That took a massive jump. 3.85 goals against 2.67. Power play 23.9. <laughs> Finally, Gil just went back down. God damn it. I thought it was fixed. <laughs> oh man what is wrong with our penalty kill who knows who the hell knows but uh now we've taken the least amount of penalties so i guess funny we've taken the least amount of penalties in our division but we've let in the most amount of power play goals that's not a good stat <laughs> any way you cut it that's a horrible stat home record's actually good now way record's decent actually really good um seven three and oh in the last 10 have we fucking lost in overtime yet and i think we have We've had, yeah, yeah, we have at this point. It was a while before we got that, though. My God. Walter Boyle, what what even are you? What even are you, man? How many points a game? Five. Uh, he's 17 points above point a game. That's kind of insane. Like, that's actually kind of insane. No, that's really crazy. He sure's uh, six points above. Karpovsev's only four points above, but he's point a game. Remember... Karpovsev is now extended to 6 mil. <laughs> Holy hell. Henrik's... What the hell? Henrik's almost point a game now. Oh my god. Second line. And it's not even really thanks to Nash. It's just those two working together. And Kachur... Yeah, still below the pace. Below the pace, definitely. Ooh, Fast hasn't gotten jack shit since the last time we checked. Rip. It's probably because my second line scoring so much. Oh, gosh, man. Krebs, yeah, he's still on pace for 50 points. He's got six points on the power play now. Only those two goals still, so he's gotten more assists recently. Interesting. Speaking of which, do we still have Ekholm on the... Yeah, I think we still have Ekholm on the point and not Muzzin. I should change that. Subban and Carlson are both producing really well. All right, anyway, forwards, forwards, forwards. Um, Brizgalov is now a plus three. I mean, so it definitely seems like he's improving that fourth line. Jang is still a minus five, but whatever, because Brizgalov is a plus three. Kruger is plus minus improved a little bit. I really think we're better with Brizgalov on there. He's grown, he's now up to a 78 instead of 77. His awareness offensively has gone up. I think his defensive awareness went up a bit or something went up in his defensive stats. Maybe it was just stick checking or maybe it didn't go up at all. And I'm crazy. His uh, aggressiveness and body checking both went up. His discipline went up by three. That's really good. It was at 84 last time, as I recall. This guy's a third round pick. Hell yeah. Got another year on his entry level. Really likes Nykvist. All right. But he doesn't mind Pete, Krebs, and Warner. That's good. Good to have chemistry with Warner. All right. Take a more in-depth look at the defense here. Carlson, 33 points. Sue and 28. They are producing like wildfire. I bet they're helping quite a bit on that first line. Or maybe they're just... They're getting free secondary assists. 
Uh, Miller with 15 points. Yeah, him and Pete still. But look at that. Like, seriously. That's my top six right there. <laughs> that's my top. They take... Oh, no, no. That's not penalty minutes. Thank God. Uh, there, yeah. Ekholm, Subban. No, they don't. we don't even really take... Subban's pace of penalties was a bit bad last time. It was 20 in like 20-something games played or 30 or something. And now he's like 28 and 48. That's a bit better. But yeah, plus minuses are crazy. Yeah, our top four is quote-unquote weaker. But you consider what's what would be playing them the most. Pete's in there along with Nyquist as well as uh, Henrik. Yeah. So, <laughs> a lot of young guys on there in, in those matchups. All right, let's see. Okay, so Warner finally lost. His, you know, his stats keep getting worse and worse. But he's learning. He's learning a lot. And you know what? He's got the points, so I don't care. All right, Grubauer is definitely falling back down a bit. Oh, yeah. But whatever. We're scoring enough for it to not really matter. And we remember what Grubauer did in the playoffs last year. He was great. Yeah, Nyquist. Nyquist might have a really good shot at that Calder now. <laughs> love it. I love it. All right. So... Let's check progress support, see if those top six dudes are growing, and first things first, Muzzin back on the power play. Our power play percentage did drop a bit. There we are. Put him back in there. Might have been my fault. All right, now progress reports. See if those guys down there listed as top six have done any growing. If not, eh. I'm still hesitant. Okay, Henrik got one more increase there. Ooh, Pete's up to an 82. There we go. Good growth from Pete right there. Let's see what it's looking like. Offense awareness went up by one. It's actually not too bad on the offensive side of things. He doesn't get many points, so discipline's at 90. That's awesome. Uh, it's a shot. Look at this. Oh, wow. This guy's a... Oh, my God. This guy's a beauty. This guy's a beauty. Wow. 89, 90, and 90 for his defensive stats. Not the strongest of skaters. <laughs> oh my god, he's slow as fuck. Oh man, stay at home. No wonder he doesn't score much. He's staying home. Oh man. Decent aggressive this body check. Damn, he, he can't skate for shit. <laughs> he was probably when did we draft this guy? I won't tell me when we drafted him here. But it was he was probably one of the ones that says skating is a weakness of his, but stay at home. <laughs> stay at home guy, man. Wow, okay. Henrik got a bit more growth there. Yeah, ooh, his awareness is even up. It's at 94, and now it's filthy. Uh, it's actually really good defensively, too. Wow. What else went up? His aggressiveness. Okay, so he's going to hit a bit. All right, but skating didn't go up. Not that it really needs to. He's a great skater. Not amazing, but he's a great. He's a good skater, man. That's solid. That's, that's what you need in the NHL. 90 plus. Uh, Kempinen, oh my goodness. Kempinen is now 78. This growth is insane. Absolutely insane growth, man. This is a D. It's another lefty. But see, we have such a we have such a controversy when it comes to defensemen now, especially lefties. I think Lowe is kind of out. He's 23. He's still a 78. He's not living up to his potential. Not a complete bust. He's serviceable, but as an offensive defenseman, he is a bust. But I drafted him second round, so he's going to pay for himself if we trade him. Uh, ben was 56, 63, Wisniewski, still 63. Wang. Markov, that's a center. Top nine guy. Hey, it's up to a 71, though. This guy might turn out to be a role player yet. Let's see. Yeah, 80, 76, 81. Yeah, for his overall, that's good. He's actually got decent offensive stats for his overall, too. 84 and 83. Or offensive stats. Yeah, not bad. This guy could actually turn out to be something. Go figure. A low top nine. All right. Uh, franchise goal is up to 65. Again, let me look at my defense situation. Brodzak, Anthony, Honka. Yeah, I don't think any of them are growing down there right now in the juniors. Or AHL. Nope. Fritz Meyer. This guy's 81 now. This guy's still unsigned. Oh, no. This, what the hell? Okay, yeah. Christian Fritz Meyer. This guy's still unsigned. And that's the reason I wanted to leave him unsigned because of how many freaking guys we had. This guy's a medium top four. 81 at 20, though. If he can get up to 85, I'll definitely probably consider using him. How's he built? Um, Really high passing. Good puck skills, but offensively, his senses aren't great. 
Uh, decent shot. Pretty good defense. 84, 92, 92. Not the strongest of skaters. So, hmm. Bit tougher, I don't know. Because Keegan Pete's already kind of like that. Not the strongest of skaters. And this guy's already in the top four. They're kind of competing for a role already. Pinot here, another righty. Or, sorry, lefty. Where are all my righties at? We only have a few. Uh, Vicklin's a righty. Again, 63. All my righties are pretty low still. All right, at least Barodzik's almost at 70 now, but still very low for all of them. Honka's the only one. Uh, but he's maybe getting top four. Nothing higher than top four. 22 at 75. Probably going to cap out around top six, realistically. And hopefully he doesn't do that. Bull oh my god, look at his shot accuracy. <laughs> Defense ain't bad though, 80, 82. Actually, it is kind of bad. 75 overall, 80, 82, and 82. It's not that strong. That's rough. It's kind of rough. Hmm. Yeah, for reference, this guy's eight or six overall lower and very comparable defensive stats. And our goalies are all crazy good. Mikola, okay, so he is growing still. Good. Ward hasn't grown at all yet. See, they're, they're role switched. The minor back and minor starter. Noobs. Speaking of which, growth. Uh, so Warren still hasn't grown at all this year. He's in his role. Whatever. He should jump in the offseason. All right. Yeah, well, the guys down there aren't growing, but again, I still am finding it hard to change things. I, I'm afraid to put that many rookies on, and all of them. And and here's the thing. Here's here's the reason why. I know some of you are probably screaming at me. Just move them up. Just move them up. But here's the only reason I'm holding off. 20 years old. All you are already almost 80 at 20 years old. My pace is 70 at 20. DPHO's a bit on the older side, sure, but I'm hoping this guy caps out at top six anyway. He's more of a top six kind of guy. Low, bit of a bust. Uh, Vaggie Holohi, low elite, maybe top six at age 22. So, oh, now he's, what the fuck? <laughs> now he's backlisted as top four. Uh, screw you. You're going to have to live with it, I think. I could switch down DPHO, honestly. Yeah, I could. I don't need him to grow that much more. He's only got the low top four. I only need him to be top six. He could still develop a couple more overall points. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. We have plenty more. I don't. I would rather try to get Honk a bit better. We're low on righties, so I would much rather try to get him better. At least up to a top six. I think he's yeah. He's a two-way guy. Again, he's not very strong defensively, but righties are a thing. Oh, he's actually really good with Edgy Holy. That'll work. Play him together. All right. So, yeah, that that's my logic behind that, especially when it comes to Vorbyov. He's only 20. He's got plenty of time. Lowe's 23. He's looking more and more like a bust. I love his offensive stats, but for... Okay, now, yeah, he is producing. Okay, never mind. He does. Okay, so he is producing well. At there's at times he wasn't producing well. But is this guy going to become anything more than a top six at this point? Don't know. We could try. We could put him up. I might consider doing that maybe at a deadline thing, but at 23, still only 78 overall. That's cutting it very, very close. And again, it's another lefty. If Pete caps out around top four, I'm going to give it to Pete. He's a stay-at-home type guy. It's always good to have defensive type dudes, especially in a defensive core. We're going to have Carlson for a few more years. Again, not that much longer. He is 32. It's getting up there. But I do I do plan on him still being very serviceable. Oh, potential dropped. Good. Well, never mind. Maybe we should start thinking about that end road, but it's a lefty. God damn, so many lefties. Hmm. All right, well, we should maybe start thinking about the end game right there. But low is not really our savior in that regard. There's no way that guy becomes top two. Not anymore. There's zero chance, so. I do want a scoring defenseman. I always like to have at least one of those on my team, and preferably in the top two. So, it might be definitely time to start looking at trade options then for all of our prospects. Get what we want. We need, a, I think, a right-handed guy would be preferable. Definitely. Okay, well, we're going to continue simming here. Get up to the deadline, and then we'll start kind of browsing around to see if something like that is available. And uh, he has to be kind of NHL ready already. Like, I'd preferably kind of in the top four already. That's That would be my preference, at least. Um... There we go. Yeah, I always, I, it always seems like that should be it because it's above it. I don't know why. Anyway, 
Make sure I don't do that wrong. I almost simmed wrong right there. Oh, that would have been bad. Unable to make any deadline trades. All right, let's see if this team can continue its winning ways. There's another shutout. Hopefully that was Warner in there. I don't think it was, though. Another win right there. Three to two. Here's a back-to-back. -back. So Warner is going to get one of these games. Let's see if we can spot which one it is. Hmm, that's a good one. Uh, Jesper Fast has been injured. That's a tough one. Back spasms out till February 13th. That's not very long, though. But he's only he's only on one line, too. Okay, that's a bit... That's kind of good, then. Nykvist is up to an 85 now. Wow, he has grown. Krebs not really grown too much. Interesting. I'm going to move Jang up. I'm going to move Jang up and then put in Pocket. Or Shore. Hmm. Let's try Shore. We'll move like that just to have righty, lefty. Even though Brzezgolov's a right winger, um, I want to go righty, lefty here with my forwards on the fourth line. Jang will be on his one time. He's got a decent enough shot to work that. Krebs is, well, really hard. <laughs> we'll have Jang. Now that should be good. Krebs, Kachur, Jang. Oh, triple playmaker, maybe not. <laughs> well, we'll see. But Jang kind of produces well. More evenly. I know Kachur likes to score some goals. Anyway. Good growth from Nyquist there. Let's see what's that. 29 points. It doesn't, but it seems like Henrik, yeah, Henrik and Nyquist are just going apeshit together. They're killing it. So it's like we don't really need it. All right, anyway, yeah, we'll do that for a bit until Fast comes back. And then we can maybe even keep Jang up there. I might even do that. Keep Jang up there and play Fast on the fourth line for a bit. Uh, Devontae, no, we don't need Smith Pelly. No, that's a decent trade, though, honestly. That's kind of a decent trade. One year left. On, that is kind of a decent trade. Let me take a look at that. I don't need Smith Pelly, but that is kind of a decent trade looking at it. And even though it's... No, no, never mind. Smith Pelly's only like a 70. Yeah, he was, he's done so dirty in this game. Anyway, I'm just exiting. That's actually not a bad trade you're getting off because you're getting a third back and a six back plus a role player type guy. That's I'm actually impressed with that trade, but I don't want it. All right, shootout win right there. So Warner would have played one of those games. They keep wanting Sim. That's never happening. I need Sim. All right, five to nothing. Shutout. And Seattle is going crazy. I'm going to get a bunch of these offers, aren't I? Because we're nearing the deadline. I might have to... Yep, yeah, okay. Get out. You want Ezra? You want Ezra? No, wait, that's not... Is that... No, never mind. Peyton Manning? Why is Peyton Manning on the block? No way. Yeah, Ezra. Oh wait, Hamus. Hold on. I was I was doing that wrong. Do I have two Ezras on this team? No fucking way that I have two guys named Ezra. That's such a rare name. It's another win right there. I'll have to check that because that's kind of crazy. I thought it was. Hmm. Oh, that's rough. Well. Yeah, February twenty second. That's a rough one. Missed on four lines. I think it's all penalty killing extras, so. Clayson goes in there. Locks things down with Muzzin for a bit. Jesper Fast is fully healed. Okay, now let's. I should have checked. Okay, he was like six and seven. He was still six and seven. Still in. It was only a couple games, though. All right, let's see what I want to do here. Could put fast in here. 23. This guy might not get too much better. I should keep him up there if I want to try to get him better. Now, fast won't get any penalty kill time or anything like that. Yeah, we'll have Rizgalov, the lefty. And if this doesn't work, obviously we just move fast back up. But I want to test it out a bit. Just to see. Just to see if perhaps Jang might get a little boost there. I mean, our team's doing great. We haven't lost in this month yet. So <laughs> we're already above 40 wins, still sub-20 regulation losses. And at this point in the season, I mean, we're sub-15 regulation losses. This is actually insane.
the how we're doing right now. Matias Ekholm is now fully healed, so he goes right back in there. I'm excited to see what our first line stats are going to be like. I assume they're going to be very, very good. Wow. This is uh, going well. We lose there, but we get a point out of it, and that's an Eastern opponent. Don't really care about giving them an extra point or only getting a point. Okay, there's a... F uh, ooh, that's a, actually a real concussion, too. So Kruger's been injured. I think Shore goes back in. That's a tough one, though. Yeah, I'm going to put Shore in, though, over Pocket. I still don't have a lot of faith in Pocket. I don't know. He just never has done that great. And Shore's defensive stats are good enough, and he's a two-way forward. Takes less penalties, too. And with our penalty kill, we don't want to be on the penalty. On the, we don't want to take too many penalties. That can't be a thing we do. Uh, wow, fast is actually... Wait, what? no, hold on. This guy got a goal and two assists since then. Yeah, I don't really remember what fast points were at. Whatever. All right, anyway. Shore's in there now. He'll be on the penalty kill. That'll be fine. Ooh, Nice win right there. Overtime win. One to nothing. Nico, he sure is fully healed. Okay, well, he wasn't ever out. All right. Rangers beat them too. We have only lost one time in regulation in this month. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, stop the sim. Just in case. Pro scout. Yep, yep, yep. Lost morale because of individual performance. Did fast. Okay, we got shut out there. Three nothing. I jinxed us. But 45, 16, and 2 here at the deadline. Our AHL, 41, 17, and 4. Killing it. Everything's killing it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Walter Boyle is 23 points above point a game. <laughs> Holy crap, man. We got 92 points. We're first in the NHL only by three. But, oh, man. Walter Boyle, you are you're gross. You're so filthy. <laughs> That's crazy. He's got end of the year stats with still tw about twenty, uh, with still nineteen games to go. What's he gonna do? Oh uh, yeah, we've uh, we've embarrassed Vancouver. We've <laughs> gotten way ahead of them now. They're only one point. They were only one point behind us. Goals for per game three point eight three. Goals against per game two point five seven. Power play percentage twenty two point nine. Penalty kill <laughs> horrible. But. Still taking the least amount of penalties. Hey. And hey, we're actually tied. Calgary has us tied for power play goals against. Hey. We've gotten two shorties, though. It's got to count, right? Only one shorty against us. Not bad. 21 10 0 on home ice. Wow, that away record, though. 24 6 2. Road Warriors. 7 2 1 in the last 10. This team is just. It's all coming together now. All of our young guys. This is. Pure and utter domination. Boyle, what else can you say? He, he speaks for himself. It speaks for itself. It absolutely speaks for itself. Just gross. Just absolutely gross. What a guy. What a freaking guy, man. <laughs> oh, man, that first line, though. Okay. So there's Henrik with 59 points. He's going to be a 30 goal scorer. That's great. I mean, he's he's got first line numbers. He and Nyquist kind of have first line numbers here. Krebs, 42 points. Again, he's definitely going to hit 50 points. Nyquist is ahead of him in that Calder race. And Nyquist honestly has a great chance to win the Calder. And this is an incredible chance to win the Calder for him. Kachurf, 39 points. Yeah, likely not. He's got, what, 19 games to get 11 points. He's likely not hitting 50 points, but he's playing third line time. Still on the power play. Not incredible production off of it, but hey. Nash has got 38 points. No power play time. Playing on the second line now. You know, still doing okay. He's a plus 22 as well, so hey. That's got to count for something. Maybe he's probably helping him play some defense, man. You know, getting him the puck, being that four checker. Still got one more year in his contract. At a pretty steep price for what he is capable of, but he is the captain, and he has paid his dues here, and he deserves it. Honestly, he deserved that money. Uh, fast, not doing too good, but he's a plus five. Jang's now a minus nine. That's not great. But un un weirdly, he's like the only one a uh, really big minus. Everyone else is... He's the only one dropping there. Everyone else has either gone up or stayed the same. Shorn there, his since we put him back on that fourth line, he's remained at the minus one that he was at before. 
Oh, Jang's on the third line. That's why. Yeah, that's why that plus minus went down. Yeah, third line. All right, Carlson, 42 points, so maybe he gets 50. <laughs> but him and Subban splitting a lot of the points there. Miller plus seven, Pete plus nine, but that, our, top, our top six plus minus is better than our top two. That's awesome. <laughs> I gotta love it. Gotta love it. Clay Suns played five games of minus three. Yeah, he's not the best at depth, but he's you don't you don't have to have him play that much, so it doesn't matter. Wow, man. Just everything's kind of going right for us right now. Look at Warner, dude. That record's great. Hey, he got a shutout. Hype. And uh, his stats are back up to being pretty damn good. He's played 19 games, too. That's not too bad. He should get about, you know, he's going to get, well, he's obviously going to get 20 games played this season. So good on Warner. And look at those stats, man. The record, I mean. 16-3 with a shutout. He's got 32 points for me in 19 games played. That's above and beyond what I want out of my backups. And he's grown up to an 81. Awesome. And we got, yeah, we got one more year for Grubauer. He'll likely be the backup next year if, if uh, Warner gets the kind of jump I think he will. Maybe, even, nah, probably, no, he doesn't have enough for stat growth. But anyway, six shutouts for Grubauer ain't bad. His personal stats, say what you will about him. This guy's basically our Martin Jones. He's, he's okay in the regular season. And then in the playoffs, well, we saw what he did last year in the playoffs, right? We saw. I mean, yeah, his playoffs were pretty damn good. Yep. <laughs> Last year, we don't count that year. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Th those numbers are crazy. Especially for the games they lost. Like, he lo like that was his record. And those were his stats. Yep. If he can have another performance like that, which is kind of why I want to keep that defensive core together. I don't even, have, I don't even think I want to trade Muzzin here. I want to keep him. I want to keep him just because of how well he and Ekholm are doing. They are doing incredibly good. Yeah, so here we are at the deadline. Now, the big question is, do we make any changes? Do we say that maybe we still need another second line center instead of Couture? It's only... He's a plus 16, though. That's actually pretty good. Jang's actually listed as a second liner now. That's rough. I can't put you on the second line. Not at all. I'll keep you on the third line, though. This guy's defensive stats aren't horrible. His offensive stats are really good. Yeah, we're going to have to pick and choose between these guys. Between guys like Krebs, Nyquist, you know, Jang. We really only have room for... I wish one of them could play center. But none of them can. We're probably going to have to... Maybe... Ugh. That's a tough call. Because our winger, our winger situation is incredible. Henrik, Nyquist, Boyle, Karpovsev. And it sucks because technically Henrik should be getting his first line time, but... It's how do you do that when Karpovsev, boy, I could try it. I'll, maybe I'll try it next year, you know? I'll uh, I'll try Henrik there instead of Karpovsev, but still, man, even, even Karpovsev. God, that 99 awareness, though. God damn, man. Like, we have such... We have such a controversy, and it's an it's a great controversy to have, but it's just nuts. Like <laughs> the only thing we don't have enough of our centers. Sim, like I said, I don't know if he's gonna be that guy. It's looking he'll be more more or less like a third liner. Eighty two. He'll at least be a good third line center. I don't think he it 77 overall with 81 awareness, man. We really need to wait basically for Peyton Manning, or try or maybe trade for one. If we th if we deem that we can't afford to wait, or maybe get a maybe go for a rental, and maybe that's what we should, we should do. But yeah, it's it's tough. We're gonna have to be making a lot of decisions here. Who stays? Who goes? There's gonna be a lot of that. Jang, he's coming up. I could tender him, hope someone signs him, or tender and trade. Thing I just, it seems like this guy. I don't know. I don't know what it seems, but he's a, he's the only minus on our forward core. He's not scoring that much, even on a better line where he should score a bit more. He's still not. 
So I don't know. It's been, it's been a small sample size there. And now he's listed as a second liner, which I don't think he should be yet. But he's got those high offensive stats. So, yeah, we, we're going to have some controversies here. But, yeah, we're going to have to decide what the hell we want here. Because when we look at our uh, players that we got, and we look at those center prospects that we have, Okay. Oh, Peyton Man Oh, he's 77 now. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. He's he'll be a lot he'll be along a lot longer. <laughs> he'll be coming along a lot quicker than I thought. I got there in the end. He's got good stats too. 86 and 87, very even across the board. Decent defense. Decent enough shot. If he's a pure playmaker, he won't really need it. He loves Barry. <laughs> he loves and hates him. As he hates and loves himself. Alright. So, at least he'll be cracking the NHL. So, really, all we need kind of is another maybe year of someone. And it can't be Couture because he's dropping off too rapidly and he's not producing much anymore. Even Sim. I mean, we might make another turnover. But if we're going to make yet another big youth movement turnover next year, and it looks like we are, Manning, Sim is going to be coming up. We'll probably have more defensemen coming up. I think I'm going to want to try to not go all in, but we are kind of going all in. We're not going to... I don't think we're going to trade Muzzin. I think we might try to improve upon Couture, maybe get a better, better center in there for our, our wingers, but maybe a two-way for... Maybe like a defensive veteran. Getzloff is on the block. Hold on. I don't think... I think he's too declined. That's too declined, yeah. Mm. Another guy I'm thinking of. Oh, where... Mm, yeah. Two years left, too. 83, probably too low. Now, I do have a professional scout in each zone. So that's why we have a lot more uncovered here. Each division, I should say. I'm trying to think of anyone with, like... Two-way type guys. Wait, if they, oh, they still have Christine. Oh yeah, derp. That value though. He must have got stat growth. <laughs> yeah, he must have. I don't think Pavelski's still gonna be here. Oh. But don't think he is still well. Maybe he's got the bottom six potential, but his offensive stats are still good. It's a two-way forward. He takes good face-offs. He can play center. That'd be awkward, trading Couture for, like, Pavelski back. Oh, <laughs> uh, and it's the one year left. I would, yeah, but, I, I, again, I need someone for next year, too. That's that's kind of a trade to make a trade in a lot of ways, and I don't know. I would really prefer, like, a defensive-type center who can also put up points. Wow, Nolan Patrick is a bust, eh? <laughs> oh, hello. Probably still is his first line, obviously. Can't really make do with that. I mean, I could, but... Again, I need someone... I would honestly prefer to your deal here. Nothing really there. So, I'll probably have to do a bit more homework on this. And the best thing to do is be to sort by overall. Yeah, this is going to be probably kind of tricky to find what we're after here. And again, we don't even necessarily have to make the trade, but it would help us out a lot. Kyle Turris might have been bad. 33, a bit of an older guy. Two years left on that price. That's not too bad, especially if you trade Couture for him. He's more of a pure playmaker, good defensive stats. No, he's a two-way forward, too. That's perfect. Oh, man, Kyle Turris might be our guy, guys. Because what I'm looking for here is the same... It's a two-way forward... And then we also have a playmaker and a sniper on that line. And I think that would be a good combination for them. Especially right now. What do you think? What do we, we got Nash there right now. Two-way forward, playmaker, sniper. While Nash isn't exactly putting up all the points, it's a, he's kind of allowing our other two guys to put up the points. And we could use something like that for next year. Sure, Kuturis may decline a bit. He's got top six potential. It might drop down. He's age 33. But I think that's still an option. They don't want to trade him, though, and that makes sense. They're doing pretty well. All right, so we're just going to do a, few, a, a bit more browsing here, give you guys an idea. Nope. 
Let's see. Oh, Kopitar. Oh, wow. That fucking contract, though. <laughs> Never mind. You would handcuff yourself like that, L.A. You are horrible. Jesus. Okay, nope, nothing there. Obviously not gonna be anything here. They're still young. Yeah. Well. There are options. Not that many. But there are options. Nikki Backstrom. Three years, no thanks. Bukestad, but... And he's 30. He won't decline, at least, from that 83. But is 83 good enough? Offensively, not really. I'd still prefer Turris over him. But again, Turris is also 33, and that seems to be kind of the, a magic age a lot of times. Couture, some of the other dudes. Taser, probably on that terrible contract still. Yes, he is for how many more years? One more. I can at least extend him for another year? That's a lot of value, though. Still listed as first line. Doesn't produce at all. But again, do we need some? Yeah, it's too much value, I think. I still think Turris is looking like the best bet here. Not Jordan Stahl. Even though people keep trying to give him to me. Oh, really? ROR is still here? Okay. Uh, one year left. We can extend him for an extra year if we want to. It wouldn't be too hard. Ryan O'Reilly might not be a bad bet either. He's got the second line. Yeah. Second line, 85 overall. He's still only 32, so if he does start to decline, it shouldn't be too heavy. Not very many points. 32 and 62. But it looks like he has two guys playing above him, so that would make sense. Ryan O'Reilly might, might not be a bad bet here either. He might be the kind of guy we're after. Ryan O'Reilly or Turris? That's kind of my two guesses there. And we're right back to where we started. So, those are my ideas for the deadline. If we were going to ship off Couture, those would be my two guys. I could fill in all the roles that Couture is in. Penalty kill, and then we can have him for an extra year. Couture, I think, is just going to drop off more. I don't know. His decline has started early, and it's, it's often. And he's going to lose whatever stat growth he has as well after a year like this. Unless he has already lost it, which he might have. But, like I said, Nash, having a two-way forward dude up here seems to kind of help us. So, we could go with something like that and let Nykvist and Henrik play and get the job done again. I think that's a good bet. So, you guys, let me know about that. Any other trades you would want to see. Um, I think I'm going to put my foot down and say we're not going to move Muzzin. We're not going to move up any of those young guys from the AHL. I think that if we can have a deep run, and if especially if we could win a cup, that's only going to benefit us. We're going to have yet another huge youth movement next year anyway. We might even have to take a step back with how we do in the season. So why not, with having such a good year we're having right now, why not try to cap that off with a very deep playoff run? So that's my thoughts. Give me your guys' thoughts, any suggestions for trades, etc. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you. Be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.